Oil prices lost more than 5% on Wednesday as fuel demand destruction and a bleaker macroeconomic picture take centre stage. Brent is now trading at $85 a barrel and WTI at $84 a barrel. These prices now have reversed course after hitting their highs of the year last week. One potential cause might be OPEC's recommendation that the cartel maintains its current oil output policy, with some analysts speculating that OPEC will need to cut production more than it already has. Finished motor gasoline supplied a proxy for demand fell last week to about 8 million barrels per day. That's its slowest since the start of this year. Some of that demand destruction could be due to torrential rains, which brought flooding to New York last Friday, but also post-tropical storm Ophelia. Now, let's get more on this with Jamil Ahmad in London. He's chief analyst at GTC. Thank you very much for being with us today. Now, Jamil, how bumpy a ride do you expect it to be till the end of the year when it comes to oil prices uh, and why? That's a bit of a crystal ball question, but what's your expectation? Ludovica, uh, bumpy is definitely the name of the game when it comes to oil prices. And there's no stranger in the room here that we have many problems with the world economy. Another one of which was the $10 rally we saw in the oil price over the month of September. And that caused a great deal of concern for different global assets and global markets. Because as we know, world economy, whether that's Western Europe, emerging markets, and so forth, are dealing with persistently high inflationary pressures. The higher oil price will add some weight to that as well. So that's one of the issues. However, having said that, it did look like it was somewhat of a temporary move because that $10 move has now reversed. But we do know there's some discomfort from some of the OPEC and major oil producer nations over the oil price going any lower than $85. We actually reached that price uh, barrier this morning. Mm -hmm. And we have to wait and see now whether we have some sort of verbal intervention or some sort of verbal comments to cause another shock higher in the oil price. And it was at this level of $85 in September that we did have some of that right. verbal intervention come into play. So that's possible. That's interesting that you say lower than $85 a barrel. That be a, might be a problem. But uh, what about uh, higher than $100 a barrel? Would that be a problem as well for supply and demand? And what do you think OPEC would do in that case? That would be a tremendous problem. Um, as spoken the inflationary concerns are already persistent and global economies, everyday people on the street are suffering. So if we have oil price above $100, it's going to be a big issue. But the large issue at hand here is that the oil price can be intervened and we can have verbal intervention to push the prices higher. Mm -hmm. And there is somewhat of a conflict of interest because major oil producing nations, of course, prefer to have a stronger oil price for fiscal and financial benefits, government revenues. So that's why we had some of that volatility in September. But Overall, the economy, world economy, needs cheaper oil prices. Whether we get there is a different matter altogether because of the government revenues aspect. And thank you for clarifying all that, Jamil Ahmad. Thanks for being with us. And now let's go to the top stories from around the world. More than 75,000 Kaiser Permanente workers, ranging from nursing staff to X-ray technicians, have begun a three-day strike, calling for higher wages and better conditions. That's marking the largest such walkout in the U.S. healthcare sector. The company has warned of possible delays as its hospitals and clinics that serve nearly 13 million Americans. Sri Lanka's central bank has cut its interest rates by 100 basis points to 11 percent. The decision comes as the government hopes to boost growth and repair its balance sheets in a bid to secure financial support from the International Monetary Fund. Sri Lanka failed to reach an agreement with the IMF in its first review of a bailout package last month, primarily due to a shortfall in revenue. And shares in SAS plunged by 95% after the Scandinavian airline announced a financial restructuring to prevent bankruptcy. Under the plan, Air France, KLM and the Danish states and investment firms will invest around $1.2 billion in return for around 86% of the company. The restructuring will also see the company delisted from exchanges.